Do you have a kid with a ton of energy and you need new ideas on how to play indoors? Perhaps you have one of these in your home and you need some new activities for how to use it. Well, check out the rest of this video to learn more. Hi, Mamas. Amy, pediatric occupational therapist and founder of Play It Be, and I'm here to provide you with some playful solutions and powerful results. Today, before we get started, I just want to remind you, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. Like this video, leave comments, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. Today, I want to talk to you about five more scooter board activities that are perfect for you if you have a scooter board or are interested in buying one. Now, I did a video many years ago that is quite popular on our Play Be channel, and I thought it's time for me to present some new ideas. One of the reasons I use scooter boards with kids is because it provides a lot of movement for them, specifically vestibular movement, and that is how children understand their movement in space. So if you have a kid who really loves to move around a lot, they may love the scooter board because it provides them all that input that they're looking for. And you might have a child on the other end of things where they don't like to move around a lot. This may be something that you can introduce to them to get them to move in play and it makes it a lot easier for you to get more benefits out of your playtime. So one of the things you wanna keep in mind is that this scooter board is not to be stood on, right? This is a scooter board that you're either gonna sit or lay on. So we're gonna talk about the different ways that you can do that. The videos we're gonna be seeing today are going to be demonstrated by a four-year-old. So you get an idea of what level we're talking about. The previous video that I did was a slightly older child that had a lot more strength. A four-year-old may not have that same ability, so I wanted to show you some different scooter board activities that you can use with preschoolers and younger children. The first activity I'm going to suggest is riding a carousel. Now, if you see this scooter board, you see that the center of it has a hole in it. A lot of scooter boards do, and the reason why is because they're often being stacked up high. What we're gonna do instead is place a pole in the middle of it. Now you may be thinking, where do I get a pole? Well, I would just suggest using a broomstick. If you need a stick to use with your scooter board, you can simply take one of your brooms and unscrew it. It takes just a few seconds to do it. Your stick is going to easily fit into your scooter board, just like this. You can have your child sit on the scooter board and hold on to the pole. Now you may be thinking, that's kind of weird. Well, guess what? My four-year-old cousin, who is in this video, is the one who came up with the idea. It was just his own natural inclination. It's going to be easy for your child to understand if he was able to come up with it himself. What you wanna do is try to see if you can have your child go around in a circle. But if that is too difficult of a concept for them, they don't need to do that. They can just ride around and get the feel of the scooter board. It's a nice way for them to be introduced to it because the pole gives them a lot more stability and it makes them feel more secure in that position, especially if they're going backwards or if they're not used to moving around on a scooter board. Another thing you can try out with the pole is if you wanna place it inside where the handles are, and that way it leans forward and it creates almost like a sail position like your child is riding a boat. Now that your child already understands the idea of the pole, you're going to use it now as a row. So the next activity is gonna be row the boat. You can even use the song, row, row, row your boat to encourage your child. If they don't understand this concept, don't be afraid to get down there and demonstrate for them, right? They're gonna understand a lot better if you show them what to do. But you're gonna have your child sit on the floor and you're going to use the heels of the feet to push forward and propel forward and the arms are going to be holding on to that stick to row the boat. All right, number three is going to be silly circles. The idea here is that you want your child to spin around in circles. That is a really fun way for you to have them get some rotary movement, which is different than what we would call going back and forth, which is more linear. One of the things I like to also do when I'm in this position is 
try to have them do an activity. So I might have them look at something and spin them around or have them spin themselves around and then come right back to that page and see if they can refocus their eyes. It's a great activity that you can do to exercise their eyes. And I talk about that in the exercise your child's eyes videos. So you may want to check that out if you want to practice that as well. So the next activity is going to be the talented turtle. Here, you're going to have your child lie on the scooter board with the tummy facing down on top of the scooter board and they are going to do an activity. Here you'll see a demonstration of putting together a form board. A puzzle is a great way to do this as well. You can have your child place the pieces underneath their tummy so that they can transfer it easier or they can just hold it in their hands if they want to do that. Or if they're really clever, they can even use their feet to try to move those pieces into their hands. The idea is that the talented turtle is accomplishing different tasks while on the board. You want to spread out the pieces so that they are opposite ends of a room than the form board so that your child has a purpose of going back and forth on the scooter board. All right, the last activity is going to be your tiny train. If you have a cargo train, it usually has a lot of pieces to it, but you have one tiny train. So your child is going to transport an object on its back across a room. Now, obviously you want this to be something that's very lightweight and that could stay on their body without easily falling off. So in this example, you will see a pillow and you can use various pillows and see if they can transport objects back and forth. Of course, if you're on one end of the room and someone else is on the other, it makes it a lot easier for this activity to happen, but it's a great way for your child to practice being on their tummy and moving very slowly so that they have control and the cargo doesn't fall off the train. There you have it. You have five more scooter board activities that you can do with your child. You have riding the carousel, you have rode the boat, you have silly circles, the talented turtle, and the tiny train. If you didn't catch the previous video on scooter boards, there's a link for you to watch it at the end of this video. Using scooter boards is a great way for you to work on getting some active gross motor exercise for your child indoors, especially during those rainy months or cold months. It is a great investment. They don't cost too much and they're easy to find. What I would suggest is getting a longer board. Using a board that is more horizontal than square allows for more surface area for your child's body, especially as they're growing and getting older. This gives a lot more space for their torso to lie on top. Children who have difficulty staying on the board might start to use their feet more. But as they get bigger and their body is more placed into the center, you will see that they'll be able to use their arms more than their feet. So you want to keep that tummy right in the middle. Scooter boards are also super durable. I've had this scooter board for many, many years. I've used it with a ton of children. So you get a lot of bang for your buck for getting a scooter board. One of the things you want to remind your child of is that they are always supposed to lie on top of the scooter board or sit on the scooter board. They are never to stand on the scooter board. When you're using this tool with your child, you want to make sure that you stay present or put it away in a safe space so that they don't ride on top of it as if it's a skateboard. Other than that, this is a hugely recommended tool that therapists suggest to parents. I have recommended these tons and tons and tons of times. Almost every client I have, I've recommended a scooter board for. That's something to keep in mind because parents often ask me what I recommend and this is it. Did you like this video? I hope that you did. If you found it helpful, I want you to make sure that you subscribe to this channel, like this video down below and leave a comment. Also, don't forget to go to playapeed.com where you will find the option to sign up for the newsletter where you can receive news and discounts and extra information like blog posts and more. And you can also check out Playapeed's 
PALS handwriting program. So I hope to see you there. And until the next video, have a playful day. Yeah.